Hey guys, welcome to uh, the last module you'll ever have to do, uh, week seven, 6.03. There was a problem with the first video, so I'm going to re record this um, and just, you know, hope it goes well. So here we are, we're talking about sets and outliers. So Sylvia works at a vending machine company as a sales representative, making $16 per hour. She feels she is underpaid, and she has recently asked her boss for a raise. The boss told her that her salary is higher than the average salary at the company. So she will not be getting a raise. All right, now there's ways data can be manipulated uh, so that it seems like Sylvia um, is getting ripped off or it might seem that she is making enough money that she, as much money as she needs. There's more way, it's the same set of data, but still having to analyze it particular ways to kind of see it in different lights. So let's look through um, some of this and it will kind of explain how Sylvia thinks she's not being paid enough, but her boss thinks she is. We'll just kind of see how statistics shows them that. Right. Just a second, it hasn't loaded. Right, let me re start the module real quick. All right, so page two, center, spread, and shape. Whenever data are collected to answer a statistical question, the data, the data have a distribution. The distribution of data simply shows how often each value in the data set occurs. Distribution is described by its center, its spread, or shape. All right. So there's some videos here that kind of talk you through some things about center, but center is sort of um, the middle of the data. Now, there's two ways to measure center. There's mean which is the average. Average is like uh, adding up all the values and dividing by however many values there were. And there's the median, uh, which is list all the values in order from least to greatest and pick the number that's literally in the center. Those are two types of measurements for center, mean and median. Sometimes one is a better measure than the other. And we'll talk about that. The next thing is spread. Um, the spread of the data is sort of the uh, least to greatest, the lowest value to the highest value, or maybe in some cases we talk about quartiles, the first quartile to the third quartile, how spread out the data is. Box plots show that really, really well. I think we'll see some of those. And then shape, shape of the data. So this kind of tends to be, is it skewed? Is everything towards the center or is everything skewed to the left or to the right? How is it shaped? Is um, is most the data lower values? Is more, more of the data higher values? Or is most of the data somewhere near the middle of the values, right? So the shape of the data. Now, if we look here at this little uh, chart, we'll see uh, kind of Sylvia's salary, right? So Sylvia made a dot plot to display the hourly pay of all the company's employees, including drivers, warehouse workers, sales reps, and managers. So if you look at the dot plot, you'll see that there are three people that make $8 per hour, three people that make $10 per hour. Uh, Sylvia, the one that makes 16, so she's that one dot there. Um, and then there are, you know, four people making 18, two people making 20, one person making 22. Now, here's what we were talking about earlier when we were saying, you know, something about um, is Sylvia really getting ripped off or is she making what she needs to make? And if you look at this, if you take the average of this set of data, uh, which means eight plus eight plus eight plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 16 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18, right? Adding up all those values and dividing by however many there are, it looks like there are six, seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, there's 14 data values. Uh, so add up all those values, divide by 14, and you get the average. Now, as they're doing here, 8 plus 8 plus 8, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 16, right? Plus the 418s plus the 220s and plus the 22. 
divided by 14, the average is 14.57. Now, uh, Sylvia makes $16 an hour, which, so her boss is right, she's making more than the average. However, if we use this as the center of data, which is the mean, uh, you'll, you know, it's kind of misleading because look back at the chart here. You know, there are all these people that are making eight to ten dollars an hour. They might only be warehouse workers, right, or drivers or something, right? All the people that Sylvia should be compared to are probably these people here making eighteen dollars, twenty dollars, and twenty-two dollars an hour. She's obviously at the end of that spectrum. She's at the lower end of that spectrum. So she's in the average. Yes, she's higher than average, but the average is including all those lower wages. So it's not really fair to say. Right? So maybe the mean is not a very good measure of center for this because the data is spread out and it's skewed. You have a left side where you have low wages and a right side that has high wages. Yeah, she's in the middle of it, but you know she should really be more compared to these values, I think, than the lower values. So it's really not fair for Sylvia to be paid $16 an hour when you look at the fact that you, know, you see how everybody else is making their money. Yes, she's making more than average. But that average is brought down by the fact that there's all these people with lower wages that might not be working as much as she is. All right, so find the median of Sylvia's company. So the median is listing all the values in order from least to greatest. So we'd have 8, 8, 8, 10, 10, 10, 16, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 20, 20, and 22, right? Listing them all out in order. So you can see that that's what's done here. Right, and then finding the number that's literally in the middle of it. So I like to take off, let's see, if I take off, that's six values in the beginning, and these are six values at the end. So these two are the ones right in the middle. So you take the average of those. Basically, what's halfway between 16 and 18? And well, the average there is 17. So the median is 17. So remember, there are two ways to measure center. There's the mean, the average, and there's the median. Now they're both different values, but you'll notice now this one, 17 is the median, and we know that Sylvia makes 16. Sylvia is making less money than that, right? The $17 per hour median is more than Sylvia is making. So now Sylvia can go to her boss and say, hey boss, look, I know I'm making more than average, but the average is kind of a bad measure of center for this set of data, simply because the data is you know, segregated into two parts. You have a low end and a high end. A be better measure of center for something that's skewed like this is the median. And if the median's a better measure of center and Sylvia's making less than that median, then she is being underpaid. And she should be at least paid $17 per hour, if not $18. Um, so that's the case that she's going to make to her boss. And that's what kind of this analysis breaks down. All right, now what about the shape of the data, right? So again, we kind of, I kind of already briefly touched this, the fact that the shape of the data has, you, know, you, have, you have your low end and you have your high end. There's really no middle ground. It's sort of a strong split, strong divide between lower paid workers and higher paid workers. And when you have a divide like that, you wouldn't want to use the mean as your measure of center. You'd want to use something that's the median. So something kind of to remember, is that um, if your data is symmetrical, meaning that all the values here kind of, there's symmetry to this uh, chart, then mean is a good idea. But if it's not symmetrical, and this clearly is not symmetrical because you can see how divided it is, uh, then the median is a better measure of center. And that's what um, all this kind of explains here. Outliers. So outliers are going to skew the data. And sometimes you don't want to consider outliers when you're actually taking data. Sometimes you want to just ignore them completely. But we'll see what this kind of has us do, right? For some of the data sets, some values can be much larger or smaller than other data values, right? We call that an outlier. Um, because of this, it can create a lopsided graph, right? As you can see here on the one that's in this little video clip, uh, that outlier is going to create kind of this long skewed line uh, to the left. And you can see it again on the chart, the bar graph, that the outliers kind of would skew that to the right. So um, it's definitely being skewed a little bit. So that's how you can identify outliers. They definitely stand out quite a lot. So skew. 
skew is where the tail is not where all the, i always got this backwards because i would say it's skewed you know left because that's where everything is but it's actually skewed right where the the fewer values are um kind of where the outliers are uh, the tail is the direction it's skewed so since our outliers would be kind of like five and six here uh all you have you know you have that tail off on the right so it's skewed right whereas if the outliers are to the left you know, then it's skewed left. All right, so take a look at the data set below. At first glance, it may appear that 21 is an outlier in this data set. Now let's order the set from least to greatest. 21, so they're, they're ordering from least to greatest. Now 21 is not placed between 43 and 63. It does not look like it's as out of place as it was before. It's not an outlier. 21 is not an outlier. It's not too far away from the rest of the data points that you would consider this to be an outlier. Okay, but it will skew the data towards that direction simply because it is kind of out there. It's definitely significantly lower than 34 and 38 and 43, but it's not, uh, it's not like nine, you know, where it's, it's way off that mark. So kind of know the difference between um, how outliers affect it and how it skews the data one way or the other. An important thing, skewed data do not always have outliers. It's a good, it's a good point. All right, so now we're looking back at Sylvia's example. We've got the same dot plot as before. If she included the owner whose hourly salary is $51 an hour, how would that change the statistics? So you'd have to add a giant outlier all the way over there, right, for 51. You'd have one dot at 51, you know, extended way down. So that's clearly an outlier. So you won't really want to use that in a calculation because it's going to mess up all the rest of this data. But let's actually calculate it and see what effect it has. So if we throw that in the equations, right, um, just so you understand where this is coming from, 204 was the original sum when you add up the 8 plus 8 plus 8, 10 plus 10 plus 10, 16, 18, 18, 18, 18, 20, 20, 22. You add up all those values, you add it up to 204. So this is the same number that we got from before. Remember dividing by 14, because there are 14. But if you're adding the 51 to it, then you're going to have to add the 51 to it, right? And then, of course, because now you're taking 15 data points instead of 14, you have to add one down there. So the new average or the new mean, if you add up all those numbers plus the 51 and then divide by 15, you end up with 17 as the mean which is a big difference than the 1450 that it was earlier. The median is not going to change too much, though, because median is designed to work well with outliers, uh, because you want to use median if you ever have outliers or skewed data. This is a usually a better way to measure things, um, unless it's your data doesn't have outliers. If your data doesn't have outliers and it's not skewed, then um, you'd want to go with the mean. But if it is skewed, if it does have outliers like this one clearly does, it's a good measure of sound. So you notice you list all the values out in order again. You add that 51 to the end. And now the number that's directly in the middle is 18. You know, you've got these seven numbers on the left. You've got seven numbers on the right. So 18 here puts it right in the middle. 18 is the median. So it increased a little bit. It was 17 first, but now it's 18, which is not a big difference. And again, that's because median is a good way to measure things with outliers. It won't be affected as greatly if there are outliers. All right. So now let's talk about um, quartiles. So quartiles is a very um, important thing. Kind of confusing at first, but it's really actually pretty simple overall. Let me screen snip this so I can write on it. Okay, so first thing you need to do, uh, and if when you're asked for the five number summary, this is um, what it's asking you to do. It five number summary, five number summary. Ask you for these values. It wants the minimum. It wants the first quartile, so I'll call it Q1 for quartile one. It wants the median. It wants the third quartile, and it wants the max. Wants all these numbers. 
Some of these are pretty easy to find, like the minimum. So the first thing you need to do when you're asked to find this is to list it in order from least to greatest. Uh, so of course, these numbers are already written in order from least to greatest. So the minimum clearly is eight. I'll go ahead and throw the max. The max here is clearly 51. Um, now the median, like we said, is the number directly in the middle. So I like to count off from the left and right. So one on the left, one on the right, two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five, six and six, seven and seven. And now that leaves 18. That's how I find out which number's in the middle without kind of losing count. Right, so 18, as we already mentioned, is the median, which is also known as the second quartile. So if you see Q2 there, it means quartile two, but it's also referring to the fact that it's the median. All right, so now how do you find Q1 and Q3? Well, Q1 is just the median of the first half of the data. So remember, 18 was the regular median, so we're not counting that. The third quartile is the median of the second half. So you're kind of splitting the data in half, and Q1 is the median of the first half, and Q3 is the median of the second half. So when you find the median, like again, you do the same thing as before, you know, one from the left, one from the right, two from the left, two from the right, three, three, and that leaves 10 as your quarter quartile one. Same thing for the right side for quartile three, one on the left, one on the right, two on the left, two on the right, three on the left, three on the right, there, 20 is in the middle. So 20 is the third quartile. Basically, it's breaking the data into fourths. So 10 is one fourth of the way in, 18 is one half the way in, 20 is three fourths of the data, right? It breaks it all into fourths. So that's how they find those values, 10, 20. All right, now inner quartile range is simple. It's just from quartile one to quartile three, it's how big that gap is. So if quartile one is 10, quartile three is 20, that's a gap of 10, right? Now you're not counting the numbers here. You're not counting how many are here. You're just counting literally the difference between 10 and 20. So, you know, you simply take 20 minus 10 and the difference is 10. So the inner quartile range or IQR is equal to 10. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So here's a box plot. Now the box plot here. All right. So what they're doing just, um, I guess what this is about is this is kind of uh, discounting the outlier. If you don't want to put the outlier in there. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because I don't remember there being any questions about that on the quiz. But here's your box plot. Now, just so you understand how to draw a box plot, this is what happens. You need to use these five numbers. So you plot those on a number line. So on this number line, we're going to put a little mark at 8 because 8 was the minimum. You're going to put a little mark at 10 because 10 was the first quartile. You're going to put a little mark at 18 because 18 was the median. So now the mark there. You're going to put another mark at 20, because 20 was the third quartile. And you're going to put a mark at, well, not 51, because we're not going to count that as the outlier, but the original max, which was 22. So they put a mark at 22, which was the maximum without the outlier. So you have five marks on your paper. And with those five marks, you connect the quartile one value and the quartile three value with a box. And then you connect the minimum and maximum with a whisker. So that's kind of how you can see how you get that box plot. So it's really five values. It's one, two, three, four, five. That's the five number summary. You have the minimum here. You have quartile one there. You've got the median here. Then you've got right there, you've got quartile three. And then of course, at the end, you've got your maximum. And like I said, you just connect uh, quartile one and quartile three together to make a box. Obviously the median is gonna be a line inside that box. And with your minimum and maximum, you just draw whiskers. Sometimes it's called a box and whisker plot because you have the box and then of course the two whiskers. So that's what a box plot looks like. Now this one looks pretty symmetrical with the other, other than the fact that the median is kind of skewed a little to the right here.
But other than that, I would say it's fairly symmetrical. Obviously, if you counted the outlier and you had your whisker all the way out here, then it's definitely very much skewed. Um, so, you know, but that's how the box plot is made. All right, so uh, let's try this example, okay? So Mr. Perez promises class a pizza party if their average grade on the midterm was at least an 80. The 15 students in the class scored a total of 1,191 points for a mean of 79.4. However, Julian's score was 57. It was an outlier in the data. Julian was ill for much of the semester and missed a lot of classes. So... Find the mean if Julian score is not included. Does this mean new mean qualify the class for a pizza party? So how we're going to calculate that is, you know, we had this was a total number of points for the 15 students. But if we take out Julian score 57, then we're going to have to take subtract 57 from this number. So 1,191 minus 57. So minus Julian's score. And also, since we're taking Julian's score out, we'll have to change the number from 15 to 14 students because now we're only counting 14 students' grades rather than 15. So they're going to take, obviously, like I said, subtract the 57 from the 1,191 and subtract 1 from the 15 because you're essentially taking out Julian's score and you're taking out uh, the fact that there's, you know, you're only counting 14 scores now instead of 15. So your new average is calculated from 11, 34 divided by 14, which is 81%. Now that average is higher than the goal. The target was 80, remember? This is 81. So now the class can have a pizza party. So is it fair though? Is it fair? Should we stick with the 79.4, the real uh, mean? Or should we stick with the new mean? What's more fair? And I think because Julian's score is an outlier and Julian was out for a lot of the class, it's fair that we don't count their score. So it's more fair to have this average as 81 rather than 79.4. You know, the whole class doesn't need to be punished really for the fact that uh, Julian was sick and didn't really stand much of a chance of passing that quiz. And that's what that says there. So now the amusement park. So we have a dot plot that shows the attendance um, of visitors every Tuesday during a school year. So most of the values are between 2,000 and 10,000, as you can clearly see here. But there are a handful of values as well that are up in the 23, 24, 26, 27,000s, right? Uh, these are on Tuesdays that fell on school holidays and vacations. So maybe like spring break Tuesday or maybe like Thanksgiving break Tuesday or some kind of break. Um, you know, there, if, if school was out, there obviously a lot more people went to the theme parks. So is the mean or median a better indicator of the number of visitors likely to be at the park? Jamal is considering taking his children to the park on a school holiday. In making his decision, which values should Jamal consider uh, help determine park attendance? Well, if he's going to go on a school holiday, he has to consider these values as well, since these are holiday days. So if he wasn't going on a holiday, if he wasn't going during some kind of event or spring break or some kind of holiday, then he could just stick with these values and take the average of those. But since he's going on a holiday and these are holiday um, attendance rates, he has to include those in his averages. And like I said, if it's skewed one way or the other, a median is a better measure of center. And of course, it talks about how he should consider those outliers because he's going on a day that's during a holiday. All right, these are some quick questions. Um, let me see... I can do maybe one or two, uh, just to get you an idea. So determine if any allies exist and draw a box plot. Then analyze each data set um, in terms of its center, spread, and shape. So I'll just do one of these 
just to kind of get you one more idea of it, and then we'll call it quits. If you're feeling comfortable, you can end the video here or just continue watching. All right, now looking at this data, uh, if I'm gonna draw a box plot, I, I don't really think I should include these two outliers. Negative one and three um, here are definitely some outliers. But we'll, we'll, let's write them down first. Negative one, three, let's go from least to greatest. So negative one, three, what's the next smallest number? 20, uh, we have 21. We have another 21, so we're gonna put 21 again. We have 25, seems to be the next smallest. Uh, 29, no, 27, 27 is next. Then there are two, no, there are three, 329, so 29, 29, 29, that's one, two, three of them. And then, oh, there's four 29s, there's another one there. So this is why I like to cross them out. 29 again. Um, then we have two 30s and a 37, so 30, 30, 37. And that looks like it covers all those data values. So uh, real quick, before I continue this, I want to know if they, in their answer choice, if they took out the outliers or not. Uh, they kind of did. So we'll do this um, without those outliers. We'll just pretend that those numbers didn't exist, the negative one and the three. So let's just kind of uh, ignore those. Let's focus on the rest data points. So we want to find the five number summary for a box plot. Five number summary means to find the minimum, which the new minimum is going to be 20. We need to find the maximum. I like to find that. It's quick and easy. The maximum is 37. We need to find the median. Okay. So the median. Let me pick a different color so I count this out better. So one from the left, one from the right. Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. So I have two numbers in the middle. They're both 29. If I obviously average those out, the average is going to be 29. So the median is going to be 29. So now I need to find quartile one and quartile three. So quick way of doing that, since 29 is the middle, I'm going to split this in half right there. So we need to find the median of the first half for quartile one. So find the median again. So one from the left, one from the right, two from the left, two from the right, and I've got these two numbers stuck in the middle. So I just want to find the average of them. You can add 21 plus 25 and divide by two, or just what, whatever number's in the middle. The number halfway between 21 and 25 is 23. So quartile one is 23, and quartile three. So let's one from the left, one from the right, two from the left, two from the right, and then we've got these two numbers in the middle. So halfway between that's gonna be 29.5, so Q3 is gonna be 29.5. So to make a box plot, we would start with a number line, and on that number line, we would go from, let's say, 10 to 40, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. That seems good. So I would put a dot at 20 for my minimum. So I'd have a, a mark at 20. I'd have one at 37 for my maximum. So 37 is about there. A mark at 29 for my median. So 29 would be about here. 23 for quarter one, quartile one. That's going to be about there. And then 29.5 for quartile three. Uh, which is just slightly past there. So now I connect the box from quarter one to quartile three. So that's like that. And then you've got that one line right in the middle that's well, not in the middle, but it's, you know, inside the box, that's your median. And then you draw the whiskers connecting uh, to your minimum of 20 and your maximum of 37. And there's your box plot. So when we check our answer, oops, as we did today, you can see, um, well, I mean, they, they obviously they did it with their 1.5s, but you have your box plot. They took out the, the negative one and the three as well. Same idea here. I won't work it all out, but I'll just quickly show you what's going on. Um, here it doesn't really look like there's any outliers. 
Um, so that's good. Uh, so they list the numbers in order from least to greatest. The minimum is 71. So you'll see the minimum mark at 71. The maximum is 96. So you'll see the mark, maximum mark at 96 over here. You see the median. Uh, look, if you take four numbers off the left, four numbers, oops, four numbers off the right, the two numbers in the middle are 83 and 85. So the average of 83 and 85, or halfway between 83 and 85, is 84, meaning the median is at 84. So you'll see a little mark here at 84. That's the median. Quartile 1 is the median of the first five numbers. So the number right in the middle of those first five numbers is 79. So quartile 1 is 79. So there's a mark at 79. And quartile 3 is the last five numbers. Again, the median of that. So the number in the middle, which is 90. 90 is the one in the middle of that set of numbers. So 90 is quartile 3. Again, there's a mark there. So the box co connects quartile 1 from 79 to quartile 3 to 90. So that's your box. And you got the whiskers that draw out to the maximum and to the minimum. And there you go. Um, really not more, not much more to it than that. Um, I hope it's a little bit helpful. I'm not going to do these. I mean, the answers are already explained. It's pretty much the same stuff. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, just let me know. Happy to help. I'll see you guys uh, later. Have a good summer. Good luck on your quizzes.